What's up everybody? In this video, I am gonna show you how to install Linux Mint 20, the cinnamon version, 64-bit of course, inside Parallels 15. I've already downloaded the ISO file and you can see it here on the desktop. So let's get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do as always is I'm gonna go up here and click on the plus to create a new machine. Now I have the ISO file, so I'm gonna say install Windows or another OS from a DVD or image file. I'm gonna hit continue. It's gonna find the one that I want. I have a few here on my system, but the one I want here is this Linux Mint. I'm gonna say, can create, and gonna go over here, I'm gonna say Mint Linux. I'm gonna leave it at that, that's fine. Uh, for now, it's gonna put it in my Parallels folder. Again, that's fine. But I am, as always, gonna customize the settings as I do the installation. It's making a guess right now and saying it's gonna use 8.8 .8 gigabytes of hard drive space. Uh, we'll see how that works out as we go along. So I've created the machine here and it's opened up you can see by default it's two CPUs, two gig of RAM, and it gives it a 68 gig uh, virtual hard drive, if you like. So I'm gonna go in here and change these settings because I always do, and if you've seen my other videos, uh, you'll, you'll know I like to change some of these settings. So in the options, I'm gonna go in here, start up and shut down manually, that's fine, that's what I want. Optimization, no limit. I'm running this on a MacBook Pro uh, 16 inch with an i9 and that should be plenty. So I'm just gonna leave it at no limit. Sharing, come back to this in a second. Applications, I don't like to share them. Uh, my virtual machines, I like to keep them isolated. That's kind of the point of why I do it. But if you wanna have kind of this seamless transition mode where you can run Linux applications on your Mac desktop, as I'm, I'm on a Mac here, uh, you can turn this on and that's basically what that does. Full screen, again, I'm gonna leave it alone. Same with picture in picture, travel mode, leave it alone. More options, it's just gonna sync the time from my desktop, uh, that's fine as well. It's gonna keep the parallel tools updated automatically. I recommend leaving that turned on. Let's go over to the hardware. Now for hardware, it's gonna recommend two uh, CPU cores. I've got 16 here, two should be fine. Uh, RAM, two gig, depending on what you're gonna use your virtual machine for. You may want to move that up or down, um, depending on the apps you're going to use and how heavily you're going to push the system, that kind of thing. I'm going to leave it at two gig for now. I think that's fine. Graphics though, it sets it for 64 meg, which, you know, I, I, I'm not sure why that's the default. I always go to auto recommended, let the VM work it out for me. Uh, resolution, scaled, that lets me change the size of the window. I'll show you that once we've got that set up. Gonna leave mouse and keyboard alone. I turn off shared Mac printers, cause like I say, I, I don't wanna share the resources between the two machines. Networking, I'm gonna use the networking from the Mac, that's fine. Sound on camera, um, I actually don't need to use those. So I'm gonna turn those off on the Linux machine. USB and Bluetooth, I'll leave this as it is. By default, when you plug, say, USB thumb drive into your Mac, it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna connect this to the Linux machine or do you wanna connect this to your Mac? And that, so I like to be able to choose. Now, hard disk though, 64 gig, nothing wrong with that, but I'm gonna turn it up a little bit here. So you'll see that if I set this up to 128 gig and this expanding disk is turned on, I'm just gonna hit apply and then I'll explain what that means. It's gonna say here, hey, you know, if you're on battery or something like that, make sure you got plenty of power because you don't want this to go wrong in the middle of it. Trust me, it's gonna be so fast on machines, it's not gonna matter. So continue, see, it's already done. Now, what this means is, the maximum capacity is 128 gig. It's not gonna start out as 128 gig as a file on your hard drive though. As you use it, and it needs to take up more space within the image file, it's gonna allow it to grow up to 128 gig. So you're not gonna start with like a 128 gig massive file, if that makes sense. It'll just grow over time. CD, I'm gonna leave that alone. Boot order, I'm gonna leave that alone as well. Now, security though. I do like to turn on isolate Linux from Mac. And the reason I do this is because I don't need the interaction between my Mac and Linux, like dragging and dropping files or, you know, sharing the clipboards, things like that. The whole reason personally I use VMs is to be able to do things isolated from the host system. That's why I turn that on. And when I turn that on, over in options, you'll see Sharing is now disabled and it's gonna say, hey, because you isolated it, you can't turn this on. Perfect, it's exactly what I want. You may want it the other way, in which case just leave this unchecked and you can share between the machines. It's purely a personal choice. 
Everything else here, I'm going to leave the same. Backup, um, I don't have this folder backed up by Time Machine because these are big files and I back up my VMs independently. So with that done, I'm going to close that. You'll see it updated here. You know, in this case, the updated hard drive space. I'm going to hit continue and it's now going to start powering up uh, the Mint Linux CD. Remember, in the case of Mint Linux, it is a live CD, so you don't even really have to install it. But um, you can see it's booted from the CD in the VM here, and I'm telling it, you know, go ahead and start there. So it's now going to power up Linux VM running off of the CD image. It's not actually installed into my Parallels machine at this point. Okay, so there you go, and it's seen my connection, uh, my network connection back to my host machine. Now what I'm going to do, I mean, you can run it from here. This is now up and running, but it's not running uh, in your Parallels VM in the sense of a true install. It's just running from that CD. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to double click on Install Linux Mint to actually install it back into the VM so I don't have to use this CD every time. Uh, in my case, I'm going to choose English, hit Continue. Going to leave this alone. English US keyboard is correct. Uh, I am going to go ahead and install the multimedia codecs just because it's out of force of habit. It's there are various formats that through legal issues and everything else, they cannot directly have in the VM, uh, in the image file when they install. So by doing this at the end of it, it's going to say, hey, while you're installing, go ahead and install these third party uh, codecs. So that's what that is. I'll hit continue. Uh, now, this is going to probably freak you out a little bit at first. Erase disk and install Linux Mint. Yep, that's what we want to do here. It's not going to, inst to erase your host machine. It's only saying it, it doesn't know that it's in a VM, right? So what it's going to do here is it's going to erase the virtual machine hard drive, which is exactly what we want, that 128 gig that I set up. Um, it's not going to erase your host machine. It's not going to trash your Mac hard drive or anything like that. Some people have seen this and asked me about it and they get a bit worried and it it's a little misleading, but it's really only misleading because the Linux Mint CD doesn't know it's running in a virtual machine, which is at the end of the day what we want, right? So I'm going to go install now. It's going to say, look, I'm going to make these changes to the hard drive. Yes, that's fine. So uh, Chicago time zone is going to cover me. I'm in Texas. That's that's close enough. It's going to ask for my name. I'm just going to put my name in here for my user. It's going to ask for a name for the machine. And I'm actually just going to change this to peter-vm-mint. So on my network, I know that it's this virtual machine. All right. Username there for the uh, Linux user and a password. So I'm just going to put in a password. I am not going to tell you what it is. And I'm going to say, look, just log in automatically. It's fine. If I'm logged into my Mac, you know, just go ahead and log into the VM. Now, that's up to you, right? You know, if people are, if it's not me and someone's already broken into my Mac, then I've got bigger problems than this VM. So I'm just going to say log in automatically and continue. So it's going to go ahead now and do the installer, depending on the speed of your machine. Uh, this may take a while or it may be pretty quick. Okay, so at the end here, it's going to present this dialog box. Uh, it's it's copied everything across. So all you really want to do here is just say now is restart now. And it's going to reboot the virtual machine. And it's now going to be booting from the Parallels virtual machine that you set up, not the CD image. So it's going to say, hey, I see a, you, you know, it thinks I've got a CD in a hard drive, which of course I don't. So I'm just going to hit enter. Okay, so now the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to realize, ah, you know what, your hardware is not running at the greatest. Well, that's uh, partly because of the, the tools that we need to install. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this here and it's going to say network's good. Okay, close that. Now, this little icon up here, I'm going to click on this and I'm now going to say install the parallel tools and continue. And what that is, it's the parallels tools that are, you know, they're like a, a set of drivers that will enable us to get the maximum performance out of this virtual machine. Um, so I'm going to try and run the install GUI here. I'm just going to double click on that. All right, so now that it's done, it's going to say, hey, we need to restart. Oh, I'm going to restart you here automatically. What I'm going to do is I'm actually 
going to just hit postpone here and I'm going to close this. And we'll just quickly go through these steps here to finish this off. So, you know, it's going to give us the welcome to Linux Mint. I don't want to see this every time. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to choose, uh, I'm going to set up a couple of little things. So I'm going to use uh, the modern look with, uh, I want the dark mode for the UI. I'm going to use this orangey color here for the highlights. It's going to tell me about system snapshots. I'm not going to worry about that. Driver manager, not worried. Update manager, I'm going to leave it alone for now. Basically the rest of these I'm just going to leave alone, but I just wanted to set those up there. And now I'm going to go down here and you can see even without the extra, you know, the parallels tools are installed, but not fully running yet. You can see that it's pretty performant, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut it down. So now I'm going to hit the power again here and you'll see how quickly this boots up too. It's wonderful. All right, and there, there you go. So, so it's done and it's installed and set up. Now, part of the things, the one of the things you can do because of those tools that we installed, the Parallels tools, I can actually drag this out here and I'm just gonna let go there. And that has, basically, I'm, I'm adjusting the resolution of my desktop. So, you know, the desktop can now be any size you want it to be. And, and as you can see, I mean, everything is really nice and fast. Um, I'll open up Firefox here just to show you that we've got internet properly working. So, you know, I'm going to put in my website here just to kind of make sure that everything's fine. Yep. So internet's working fine there. One last thing I like to do is I like to just go in and make sure I like to go into the update manager and just make sure that I just click OK. And I just want to really make sure that everything is up to date. So you can see, you know, sometimes those ISO images could be a little out of date and they haven't got around to updating them. So I'm just going to check for any updates here. It's going to pull down the packages, install those. And then it's going to say, oh, look, you've got these updated packages. All right, go ahead and install them. Put my password in. So basically it's going to download those packages now. If you're familiar with Linux Mint, this will be familiar to you if you're not. Um, it's just a way of keeping the operating system and all the files and applications up to date, like any update manager in other OSs, Windows, Mac, you know, all those kind of things. It's completely updated. Depending on the updates, uh, I saw a kernel update in there, I believe. You may need to reboot your machine. So um, I'm just going to close this here because we are done here. This is it. This is fully working. You can now customize this any way you want. Just start working with it. But that is how you install Linux Mint on Parallels. Hope it's been helpful. Um, check the channel on you know youtube.com forward slash graphics G, G R F X G. If you're looking for other flavors to install on parallels or other you know operating systems, I do have some others on there depending on the operating system. They are all slightly different, but that is it.